I tasted 14 burgers in Auckland City to see which one is the best. Must be under 20 New Zealand dollars, must be a beef burger, and has to be in the Auckland CBD vicinity. Basically, I rate the burgers on four categories. First, we've got taste, and we rate them out of 10. The second category is quality and how fresh it is. Value for money. Do you walk in and buy something that's really small, costs a lot of money, and you feel ripped off? And the final category is the experience. Is the place well kept? Is the decor nice? Feel welcome? Is the service good? I then added them up to get these results and I'm gonna list them from worst to the best. Let's start off at the bottom, number 14. And yes, it's McDonald's. We've all had McDonald's before, but I had to put it in the, the category to see what we're working with here. And look, we got a Big Mac. It's one of the world's most popular burgers. And look, it scored actually high on taste. I mean, these things actually taste quite nice. They've got a nice sauce in them, but it didn't score well on quality. It just looked drab. It's not very fresh and it's very processed. Calculating taste, quality, value, and experience. The Big Mac comes in at the bottom with a 6.1. Then while we're at McDonald's, we're also going to get the Angus Burger. I think when it first came out, it wasn't too bad. And, and I've had a few of these before. I tell you what, the quality of this thing was just not... I can't, you can't call this gourmet. Um, the bacon was just dry. The patty just tasted kind of like a Big Mac patty, but just a bit bigger. Like there was nothing really special about it. And there's nothing to it really. It's a really basic burger. Like I think they need to rethink it or they just need to up their game. My calculation for that Angus burger came to a 6.3. Okay, coming in number 12 is Better Burger. Now these guys set up in Auckland um, not so long ago, maybe like 10 years ago and Every time I go here, I'm a little bit let down. I'm, I'm thinking about In-N-Out Burgers and think, man, you guys could have been the In-N-Out Burger of New Zealand. Whoever designed the burger and the quality of what's going on in there, it just disappoints me every time. And yeah, it's such a shame because the shops are nice and they've got great locations. I think they've spent a lot more time getting these locations and setting up fancy looking um, marketing and stuff. Look, it's not a bad burger. It just doesn't score high, okay? It's a mid-rangey thing. There are, there's a few burgers I haven't tried on there. Admittedly, I've only had like three different burgers on there. Go have an In-N-Out burger in America and it is just so superior. A better burger needs to be better, like they claim. Calculating taste, quality, value, and experience, better burger came to a 6.4. Now, next up, we have Gourmet Burger and Brew Kitchen. Now, this is situated in a nice area right down near the wharf. These burgers are good value. You know, they're kind of, kind of larger burgers, and I do take the hats off to sort of the creative menu. Like, there's quite a few options there. It was okay. It, the patty was really good. Uh, admittedly, it was one of the best patties I had out of this whole test, so it was in the top tier of the patty. You know, the burger, oh, it's just a little bit sort of dry, and it wasn't like, I would, I'm not running to go get another one, okay? The Gourmet Burger and Brew Kitchen came to a total of 6.9. All right, tucked away down here is a little place called Re Burger, and they've actually got multiple shops uh, around the country and I have had a few art re burgers before and they're pretty good okay they've gone with this kind of street vibe with kind of like graffiti and like old school retro games they've got a lot of burgers here so look the menu's got like a lot going on they're sort of based around these kind of hearty big burgers and the very first one I had was more of their basic burger with sort of this lettuce and tomato and mayo and that's been my favorite it, like it's a very good burger Today I, f I, I tried a little bit of a spicy one. It, it wasn't anything to go back for, and I'm gathering that they might have a few standout burgers. Um, the overall experience was great, you know, it was good service. Um, probably my only thing is that there's no napkins on the table like there are in, say, Burgerfield. Reburger comes in with a great 7.5, and, you know, I do recommend going here. These guys are called Burger Geek, and, and it's, it's a cool shop, man. It's been here for a while. I've had a few here again, and this time I got something spicy to, just to change it up. Their beef patty is very unique. It, it's probably the most kind of fleshy, meaty. It feels like someone's got a steak and actually put it in the burger. It's really, it's really nice. It's really nice. Now my bun wasn't all that. It was a, it was just a little. wasn't the most fresh bun. It, it happens. Um, I've had a fresher one another day. The overall experience is nice. It's kind of busy, I and mean, that, that's a good thing. You know, it means people are you know are liking the food. And you can go order on this little tablet thing. It's not in the most glamorous part of town. With all these elements in mind, Burger Geek comes in at seven point six. Okay, up on K Road is a place called Hunger Burger. 
Now this place does great burgers, okay? Their actual burger is better than some of the ones coming up after this. The only thing it didn't score is so high as, is it, you know, it's just that the shop's just pretty average, you know, that's probably the only thing that's held it back a little bit. The actual burger itself I had here, which was their recommended popular burger, it was the Kiwi Burger. Amazing, you know, it was big and it was hearty, had all fresh ingredients and it was, if you're not in for a flash experience at all, um, and you just want to rock up and get a good burger, Hunger Burger, K-Road, great. And they come in with a strong 7.9. All right, next up on our list is Burger Burger and they're real flash. You walk into the shop, it's got a massive bar there, there's funky music playing, um, there's kind of cool people hanging out, all these kind of office workers. You go to this table and you just order off this little QR code thing. I had one of the most recommended burgers. Okay, the quality of it is pretty good. It's kind of big. I just don't, I'm not running back to go get this burger. It had nice pickles and stuff and this little mayonnaise and stuff, but I think it just lacked a little bit of flair or just something, something to give it a, a bit of flavor. And it felt like a, just a bit of a chore to get to the end of it as well. I, look, I've had about two burgers from this place, so maybe I need to eat more, but it still scored pretty high because the whole experience was, was good. Um, like I would rather have the hunger burger that we previously just looked at. But the reason this scores higher is just the overall experience was really nice. We get to a total of 7.9. All right, coming in at number six. This place has got a lot of bad reviews because it's only been open for about a month. They had a hard time because it was so popular. And yes, this is Wahlburger. From the famous Wahlberg Brothers um, family. It's a family business. Um, they've got shops all around the world, but this is the first one in Auckland. It had a lot of anticipation, so you couldn't even get into this thing in the first couple of weeks. There was, it was just overcrowded. They got all these bad reviews. You know, overpriced burger. It, cost, it took three hours to, to give me a burger, you know. Um, I actually did try, and, I, and they said it was going to be like two hours. So they weren't ready for that. Anyway, I finally got in there on a quiet day. I had a great experience. Came in, the shop looked wonderful, the staff were great. They turned off the QR code things because um, they weren't working, and they just had table service, which I love. I had their most popular burger. I, I checked the whole menu, talked to the staff. It was pretty good. It had that kind of thousand islands that you get out of Big Mac. Uh, the patty was pretty nice. It's a bit basic. There's not like they don't think they're, they're scoring too much points on creativity. They're just trying to give you a pretty good experience. The, the freshness was pretty good. What I actually really like was the shop itself. Um, they spent a lot of money, and this is in right in downtown, right on the water. This is real estate. You're paying for the real estate. Yeah, it's an $18 burger. But if you kind of want to go somewhere and feel a little bit flash while eating a burger. <laughs> Uh, Wall Burger is is the one. Admittedly, there's more burgers to try, but they scored well. And I'd rather have one of these than the Burger Burger. So, good on them. Give them an honest review. They they need some help there. There's also a kids menu and a bar there, so you can go have some drinks by the water. Coming in with a solid eight out of ten. Ooh, that was a surprise. Wasn't it? it was better than I thought. Man, it was a, I thought it was gonna be. All right, it's getting tighter now. We're down to the top five. Coming in at number five is Black Dog Burger. This is uh, situated on Nelson Street in the city. This is this is next to a pub, so you can go get a beer and then walk in and go get a burger. They only got a few burgers on the menu. Now I got their, their go-to burger, because as the guy said, it's the go-to burger. So um, it's called the Beef Smash Burger. This one's an interesting one. They're throwing in kind of three things that kind of, I think they clash a little bit. You've got the patty, you've got this bacon, and I tell you what, the quality of the ingredients here were was amazing, probably, the highest, if not, yeah, in the top tier of all the burgers I had, the quality is really good, fresh. The issue I had is that they've got these onion rings in the burger. With the bacon and the onion rings and the patty, it just made a big meatloaf. I couldn't even taste the patty because it's been overpowered by kind of bacon and kind of onion rings and, and the bacon was so good. It was more like a ham, but that was very overpowering and I kind of lost the track of a burger here. It was filling, it was big, but it scored high because of the freshness and the quality. Look, you might like a burger that has onion rings in it, and this will, this could be your favorite burger. This is all just my opinion at the end of the day. Black Dog Burger scores really high with an 8.3. I think if they jazzed it up with some sauce, took out the onion rings, I think you would have something really special. Okay, you know this place. If you live in New Zealand, you know this place, and it is our own burger shop called Burger Fuel. Yep. Burger Fuel, it comes in at number four. Some of you guys are gonna be like, mm, Burger Fuel is good, okay? They've been around for a long time. I've, I used to go to the first shop. The quality of 
that first shop, the burgers they were putting out there were amazing. They were nine out of 10s, they were so good. Yes, after the years when they franchise and there's lots more shops, the quality dropped a little bit, okay? It's dipped a little bit, but I think it's coming back up because the last, say, three or four burgers I've had from Burgerfield, the levels come back up. These guys brought in aioli. Like, we didn't really have aioli in New Zealand, and they put it, that's a specific ingredient that's in most of their burgers, and I think it might be in all of them. But then they're creative as well. They've got, like, burgers with mango in them. I had the Bastard Burger because that is the main go-to for me. I've had many other burgers there. Burgerfield, if you come to New Zealand, Burgerfield is a must. It's a unique flavor. I think they even set up a shop in Dubai. And hats off, you can go anywhere in the country and go get one of these burgers. To, to do that kind of consistency, Burgerfield scores really high with an 8.4. All right, we are in our final three. And we've got an equal second, guys. We have an equal second. First, I'll show you Bobby McGee's. Bobby McGee's is on Galatos Street. And it is a beautiful, big, shiny chrome caravan. They've done something fun here. They've named their burgers after famous um, musicians that have passed away. I had the Jimi Hendrix. The Jimi Hendrix was a great burger. They had, they used chipata bread. And I, I'm a big fan of chipata. That's the like it's an Italian kind of sourdough. And it was fresh. Inside we've got a big, beautiful beef patty. It tasted great. Service was great. And the burger just felt fresh, unique. Now I, I actually want to go back here and try the chicken burgers. This is a beef burger test, remember? So we've got a cool decor here. They've got some photos up on the on the on the fence here. Highly recommend Bobby McGee's. Um, come here. It's, now the only issue with Bobby McGee's is that only open on like four or five days of the week. But Bobby McGee's equal second, 8.5, equal second with the white lady. <laughs> what are these guys started? 1940. Yeah. 1948, these guys have been around. Little truck you walk up to late at night, you're drunk, you're hungry, it's 3 a.m. You go up to the white lady and you sit on a little milk container box and eat a burger. You know what it is about the white lady? Is that they've got the takeaway bar burger taste. Okay, so when you go to a fish and chip shop, you get a hamburger in New Zealand and it has this kind of tomato sauce that's kind of runny in it, but it's got a specific flavor. They've got that flavor in the burger. This is something you can sort of only get in New Zealand, maybe Australia as well. They've nailed the flavor. They've stayed true to it for that long. Now, White Lady actually have a few shops, so you can, there's actually a shop on K Road. I went to the shop this time to show you. Um, the true White Lady is the van though. Oh, it's the food truck, sorry. And it kind of moves around town. But they have also have a little one that you'll see out in some other places. Anyway, I got my favorite, which is a Hawaiian burger. Beautiful. Oh, and they nail it every time. I don't think I've ever had a bad white lady burger, ever. They've got other burgers over $20. There's one called the Aucklander, and it's literally a massive thing. Now look at look at these little meat patties they got here. If you're into burgers and you haven't been to New Zealand before, try a white lady. It's a New Zealand flavor, so. So hats off to you guys with an 8.5. Equal second. All right, can we get a drum roll for the winner? of the Auckland Best Burger Competition, under $20, Beef Burger. Woo, Fat Puku Burger. That's you, boy. Fat Puku, oh my God. If you haven't been a Fat Puku Burger, what are you doing? Well, they've only been open for like six months, so you wouldn't know about it. But you do now. It's the best burger in Auckland I've found. The $20 Beef Burger, under $20. Fat Puku Burger is located up on the top of Queen Street. You gotta walk up a hill or you get a taxi or whatever. You gotta get yourself here because the shop looks amazing. They've decorated the walls. You've got all this kind of unique artwork in there. They've even got a little computer game for the kids. I think they even serve some alcohol there. It's kind of funky, cool. But once you order one of these little burgers, when it hits your mouth, your whole mouth goes, it gets ready for this flavor. And it's a mustardy, beefy flavor, salty, mustardy. And it's just a taste explosion. And you immediately go, oh yeah. Oh yeah, they got it. This is science going on here. These guys actually spent a long time mucking around with the ratios and the buns and stuff just to get it perfect. And it's a really, a really yummy burger. I've had a two of them now. I had to go back to check to see if they were on top. Just no one could beat them all the way through this test. And then I was thinking, oh, is it White Lady? Or was it Burger Fuel? Or was it, or was it Bobby McGee's? And then I went back to Fat Puka and I was just like, nah, Fat Puka. 
Look, it, it may not be your bag, this burger. It's heavy on mustard, okay? If you don't like mustard, don't bother coming here. If you don't like a sweaty, kind of greasy burger, maybe it's not your bag either. But I tell you what, it's delicate. They just nailed it. It's just, it's a great freaking burger and I'm very proud to give them the winner of this year's best burger, under $20 beef burger, Auckland CBD.